just uh, sneak out from under there and welcome you back to another day of making gains. Today's video, I don't know exactly what the title is going to be. I'm going to talk briefly about you know how my diet's been structured, what I've actually eaten during this time, during this bulk, to put on size, to put on muscle. You guys know I've put on weight, I've put on plenty of weight, and um, it all comes down to obviously what you eat. You can train your heart out. If you don't eat enough, you're not going to put on weight. On the other hand, if you're trying to drop weight, you can train your heart out. If you eat too much, you're not going to drop weight. So at the moment, uh, my mindset is completely off of dropping weight. Um, I heard, and you know, this this was really solidified the other day. I heard uh, a couple of guys talking about macros, talking about how they were going to up their carbs from 200 to 250 today or something like that and I was just shaking my head, I was just like, oh my god, there is no way I could go back to that right now. And, and to be honest, even when I was dieting, I wasn't always that meticulous, you know, I, I, I'm never going to be that guy and you know, that, had, that, that kind of mentality has followed into uh, bulking phases as well. So I'm never going to be that guy that really counts everything. In fact, the last four months, I have not counted a single calorie. Um, but in saying that, I have sort of stuck to the same sort of foods. Um, I eat until I'm full, I eat when I'm hungry, um, I eat intuitively, and I train intuitively. And this is pretty much a classic haul of food for me from the, from the supermarket. So I'm not going to enter the debate you know, behind dirty bulking versus clean bulking, but the way I see it, whether, you know, if I'm going to try and put on weight, I'm not going to pussyfoot around. I'm certainly not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to die wondering. You know what I mean. So if I start a diet to put on weight, I'm going to start slamming the calories. I'm. I'm never going to be that guy that does a fucking six or eight week reverse diet into a caloric surplus. You know, I'm going to hit it hard. If I start seeing that that scale go up, I'm happy. You know, that really gets me in the zone straight away. If if you know I was pussyfooting around trying to trying to work out the the, the right amount of macros and calories to make sure that I was only 300 above so that I was lean bulking the whole time. If I had to do that, you know, my motivation would be fucked by the first two weeks. So this time and other times that I've, that I've bulked, I've just cracked into it straight away and that's exactly what happens. You know, I started incorporating creatine as well, which gave me a little bit of a kick, uh, a couple more reps here and there. So I was feeling stronger, I was feeling bigger, heavier from the start and I just continued that right through. So one thing I will say is that I'm, I'm pretty slack when it comes to vegetables, to be honest. Like fruit, as far as fiber, I get it from your starchy carbohydrates and fruit. I'm really slack on the vegetables and I think that's just the fact that I've got to prepare them. Um, my, my, my fucking freezer is full of uh, frozen vegetables, but I don't know, they just don't make it to the plate for whatever reason. So with that being said, my carbohydrates come from starchy sources, uh, cereals, rice, uh, breads, things like that, and also from fruit. So for fruit, I don't buy these things every time. Every time I do buy fruit, I definitely get bananas. So, you know, I get a few of those, I'll, I'll go through, I'll leave them on the, the bench, you know, every smoothie that I make, I'll put one or two in. I'll have them as pre-workout uh, meals, I'll have them as snacks. They don't last very long at all, like this is probably about 12 bananas and it might last 3 or 4 days. Um, we've got some apricots, we've got some nectarines and some mangoes. So all of these fruit, except for the bananas, I'll put into the fridge and a, a nice cold nectarine or a nice cold fucking mango on an absolutely stinking hot day is a real nice snack and it's good for you. So those are my fruit sources for today. And as far as other carbohydrates go, we've got rice, so it doesn't matter, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it really doesn't matter to me whether it's brown or white rice, if you need to hit a certain amount of carbs in the day to make sure you're in that surplus, I really think that whatever is going to go down the best, whatever you, you find the, the most tasty is going to be the best option. So we've got plenty of rice, I'll make sure I've got seasonings and sauces and things, so it's, it's definitely no meal in the last four months has ever been bland. And if I, take a, if I take a bite of a meal and it's bland, I'm just like, why the fuck am I eating this? Like, you know, food is here to be enjoyed. In saying that, I do consider micronutrients and, you know, your vitamins and minerals and fiber and things like that, I, I consider them to be extremely important. Um, in fact, a lot more important than your macronutrients. So when you're trying to gain weight, this is another thing I've found. When you're trying to gain weight, 
macronutrients become less important than when you're trying to lose weight because I feel like when you're in a caloric surplus, you've, you're anabolic, you've got this food in your system, you've got this nutrients running through your system, protein becomes less important. Um, I, I feel like you're, never, you're not going to be catabolic. How is your body going to lose muscle when you're in a caloric surplus, whether that be a caloric surplus full of fat, uh, carbohydrates, or protein? I feel like you can get away with your protein you know, going down slightly. So with that said, I started this bulk making sure my protein was up around 250. Um, some days it's been probably about 150 and I haven't worried about it because I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting away from all this bro science, you know, I'm not being so meticulous. I never have been and I never will be. So anyway, regardless of that, uh, carbohydrates, we've got the fruit, we've got the rice and we've also got starchy carbohydrates which I tend to get as a sweet option because I need something to, you know, keep that sweet craving um, at bay. So with that said, we've got some cinnamon donuts, which are low in fat. I tend to keep my carbohydrate sources low in fat, so then I can bring fats in from other sources um, and make my meals really uh, tasty and things like that. Because at the end of the day, yes, macronutrients haven't been too important to me, but I still want to keep my fats you know, low-ish, because I, I feel like carbohydrates and protein are the two macros that you really need to up um, to, well, carbohydrates especially, but Protein second, fats third. Um, anyway, I'm gonna keep going. We've got some cinnamon donuts, we've got cinnamon scrolls, which are absolutely delicious. We've got apple cinnamon scrolls, and we've got uh, cheese and marmite scrolls. And honestly, guys, I love my fucking scrolls. I love them, I love muffins, I love bagels, I love fucking cakes and brownies and all sorts of shit. I just love that shit, right? So to find something that is relatively low in fat, you know, not too high in sugar. It's, it's not that healthy for you, but in saying that, you need carbohydrates from somewhere, man, don't you? I mean, fuck. It, it's, it doesn't seem to have affected my health too badly, but what I will say is that some days I, f I find myself just having way too much sugar, and then I will get a headache, and I will get dehydrated, and I'll know that, you know, I've really basically poisoned myself, because at the end of the day, sugar in high amounts and high doses is like a poison, I reckon. But if I'm having maybe two scrolls a day or I might have six of these fucking donuts in a day, it's not too bad, right? I don't think so. But as far as protein goes, we've got egg whites, which I will mix with bananas and protein powder and mixed berries and things like that in a blender for shakes. So I'll let those defrost in the fridge and I'll just pour them out as needed into my shakes and things. Um, other protein sources, we've got chicken tenderloins, I'll get breasts, I'll get thighs, I'll get tenderloins. Today I got tenderloins because they were on special, usually they're not. And we've got kangaroo meat made into burger patties, uh, which is extremely low in fat once again. And we've got some 97% fat free shaved ham, which I use on, um, I'll use it on sandwiches because I love a ham sandwich. I don't know about you guys, but I fucking love it. So cereals which is another staple carbohydrate source. I've got the fruit, I've got the starchy carbs, and I've got the cereals. We've got oats, which I go through like nothing else. And we've got some, um, some uh, Nutri-Grain, the Woolworths version. All right, apologies there, guys. Um, we got cut off, the fucking battery ran out. So I'm gonna leave you guys now. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. That is how I've been structuring my food intake, my diet, over the last four months, and we've made some good gains, and it's not stopping yet. So, um, follow along for more. That's all I can say, guys. Who knows where we'll end up. But what I will say is that we're weighing in at about 102 kilo right now, and I want to get it up there to about 110, because then I could say, I could literally say I'm 240 pounds, which is fucked. Like that's heavy as shit, so let's get there. That's all I can say. And I'm going to get there with the help of all that food that you just saw. So just one final quick word before I do go. I realized that I didn't really tell you anything about the actual structure of my diet, you know, which kind of meals when and things like that. So the way I've done it is I will wake up in the morning and depending on how long it's been since I've had my last meal, I'll either fast, I'll, I'll grab a coffee, regardless, and I'll either have a big smoothie 
which has you know a good amount of protein, a good amount of carbs, I'll either have that or I'll have nothing. And I'll probably make that smoothie and actually take it with me to work to have a little bit later because you know the way I've actually done it is I've gone throughout my day and um, basically you know use my brain on things and I, I realized that you, you grow when you sleep right so you'd want a lot of nutrients running through your, your body and you know being delivered to your, your muscles and recovering properly whilst you sleep so with that in mind you'd want to eat right up until you went to bed right so that's how I've been doing it I've been having at least you know a thousand if not 1500 calories in my last meal before I go to bed um, marijuana has helped with that <laughs> I will say uh, I get you know a, pr a pretty good dose of the munchies every now and then so it's not a problem for me and I feel like you know I wake up in the morning basically with bulking guys the thing about bulking you've got to you've got to get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable at times it's just the way it is you're gonna feel bloated you're gonna feel fat you, you're not gonna feel the best at times you know you're gonna feel sluggish because you've probably smashed yourself with too many carbs you need carbohydrates to grow uh, that's just your body just fighting back I guess um, you know growing muscle is not easy but it's not it, you know people overcomplicate it they really do and the way I've structured my meals around training is I'll make sure I've got a good amount of protein and a good amount of carbohydrates before and after I train so you know beforehand a good amount of carbs might be 100 grams a good amount of protein is probably about 50 post training a good amount of carbs is probably 100 to 150 grams and protein you know anywhere from 50 to 100 and as long as I've got those two meals in place every single time and every single day, every single time I train, before and after I train, I feel, I feel good. I feel like I've got the basis right. I feel like I've got the basis behind everything right. And I can just fill up the rest of my day with, uh, with added meals. You know, whether I have that shake first thing in the morning, um, that's probably another 700 calories or something. Um, you know, I'll have, I'll take food to work. I'll take packets of rice with tins of tuna, I'll, t I'll buy a whole chicken from the supermarket um, and you know buy some uh, a loaf of bread and make chicken sandwiches, I'll buy some fruit and a protein bar, you know, I'll, I'll mix it up, it really doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm not meticulous on exactly what I'm having but I'll make sure that I'm sticking to those numbers, I'll have a good amount before and after I train, I feel like that's putting me in the best position to be anabolic. Um, the, 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 fuel, the, the food you're taking in before you train is literally fuel. It's fuel to make sure you have a good workout. The food you take in after you train is recovery. Okay, so smash it before and after you train. Whether you're cutting or bulking, I, I'd say smash the food. There's no way in hell I want to face another fasted training session. They're just not worth it. The only time I'm doing fasted training sessions is first thing in the morning if I have eaten a lot um, before I went to bed, like more than usual, I'll wake up and I, I definitely won't feel like eating, so I'll, I'll smash a coffee, I'll get the, you know, I'll, I'll get going, I'll get the fucking caffeine in my system and I'll go down to the gym and I'll smash a workout and then post that, following that I'm hungry again and I'll, I won't feel guilty eating at all and um, I'll start my day like that. So that doesn't happen very often, that means that I've either got a day off work or I've, I've woken up really early before work, which definitely doesn't happen. So um, that's about it and I hope that covers everything. So as far as dirty versus clean foods, I'd say 30% shit food, 70% you know, relatively good food, which means low in saturated fat and low in sugar. That's basically what that means. So that's about it. Until next time guys, have a great day. Train hard, eat well like I'm about to do. Cause I'm fucking starving and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Me, I'm all the way up. Hey.